Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hello and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Today we radiate luck with Dr. Joe Gallenberger, who's been on George Norrie's Coast to Coast many, many times, done, has done over 200 of these such interviews. Dr. Joseph Gallenberger has 30 years experience as a psychologist, is a senior trainer at the Monroe Institute, and is a psychokinesis expert. His PK discoveries in university and casino environments are detailed in Inner Vegas, Creating Miracles, Abundance, and Health. He has taught 99 Inner Vegas adventure workshops where people achieve dramatic healing and strong influence over dice and slots in casinos. Uh, he's also written Liquid Luck, the, the Good Fortune Handbook, and the CD Liquid Luck. He has developed Synchronization, Sync Creation, sorry, a home study course, teaching PK as a way to increase abundance. His latest book is Heaven is for Healing. All right, that's quite a credential. Hi, Dr. Joe, how are you? I'm doing well. How about you, Christy? Oh, doing very well, thank you. So that's- We're doing this inauguration day, so it's kind of a special day. It is kind of a special day. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we are recording this January twentieth. Yeah, and, um, yeah, it is. Oh, oh, it just feels like a kind of a magical sort of day. And uh, working from home, you see, I've got one of my coworkers here, my my cat Casey. <laughs> so, Doctor Joe, you uh, stu- you specialize in psychokinesis. Can you tell us a bit more about what that is? Yes, so Christy. Um... People use the words telekinesis and psychokinesis interchangeably, and it's basically affecting physical matter reality with your energy and intention. <clears throat> so that would include things like we uh, in the home study course and my MC squared program up in Monroe, we grow seeds in our hand from seed to an inch and a half root growth in two minutes. Uh, we bend metal. Uh, and uh, plastic using our energy. I have some samples I can show you of that if you want. Uh, We roll dice in patterns, affect slot machines, uh, and it's the same energy as you'd use for energy healing um, and for manifestation. Uh, So um, uh, the nice thing about PK itself is it's quite studyable in labs. You can look at it statistically And at this point, uh, the summary data of all the studies in the last 20 years or so on uh, PK show this is a Six Sigma event, meaning it would occur less than one uh, once in a billion by chance. So we know it's real and uh, we know people can do it. It's a natural skill, but uh, something that most people haven't uh, spent much time on learning. So that's one of my areas of specialty Uh, using the feedback, if you can bend metal or like we'll hit a slot machine, uh, 160,000 to one by chance, and we're all flushing hearts on the first pull, those kind of things, it gives you verification. So this is real good feedback for you that you are working the kinds of energies you use for manifestation well. Because in real life, you know, if you had a negative thought for weeks, it might be before you got a cold, and positive ones toward finding a soulmate might take a year to bring that soulmate in, and you don't know whether you're doing it right or not. But the dice, the slot machines, metal bending, growing seeds give you quick feedback that you got it right. That uh, blend of intention, uh, energy, and letting go. And a lot of people talk about PK is affecting matter with your mind. I don't like that definition. The mind is like the steering wheel of a car. It sets intention, direction where you want to go, but the car goes nowhere without gas. 
And the best gas we found to use in PK is the energy of unconditional love. Uh, so that's positive spiritually and psychologically, and you get good consistent results with it. So uh, our focus is quite a bit on energy. That's amazing. And so um, there's so much that I want to ask about this. And so you're talking about bending spoons, at plastic and metal, uh, yes. affecting physical objects. Much like Yuri Geller did back in the 70s. Yes, yeah, so he did some of that. Here's a, a fork. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> did um, you do that one? Yes. This oh. is a spoon, and it's the heaviest Oneida silverware. And it's got such a tight bend that metallurgists looking at that say it's impossible. It would break because of the molecular chain length if you used force. And if you heated it up, there would be stress marks. So um, here's another fork I did that I like. The forks are kind of fun because if you, this is very heavy an item where, again, if you pressed real hard, all you're going to do is make a mark in your finger. And so it becomes very soft and you can twist it around. Um, so now this is a very, perhaps a very basic question, but the fork yeah. that you showed, and if you're listening on, you know, a traditional podcast, I'm not seeing this on YouTube, you don't get the full effect. But the, Dr. Joe, the the fork had so many bends and twists and certain, do you, this is a very basic question. Do you yeah. twist one thing at a time and then twist another or does it all just form like that at once? Yeah, so when people start this, usually the metal will soften for about two seconds and it feels oily and like a noodle. And in those two seconds, you can do some bending. As you get more experienced in energy flow and keeping the flow going, it may stay soft for 30 seconds. And so usually a person will feel like one time get soft and put a bend in it, oh, maybe just yeah. part way. Then they'll wait a while, it gets soft again, they bend some more. Um, and depending, so the quickest I've seen is somebody kind of go, if this was a fork, one, two, three, four on the tines within 15, 20 seconds. Oh, my goodness. So the mind, the power of that energy softens the metal, and then you twist it by hand. Yes. Oh. And you can do it. Um, some people have talked to relatives about the excitement of doing this mm -hmm. while they're out in a meal, and the bowl just spontaneously bends over. Some people can do it at a distance without touching it. Um, <clears throat> and initially I thought, you know, this could be fake kind of stuff, uh, sleight of hand magician work. Right. But once you're holding the metal that you bought yourself at the store and it goes, it's very confirming that it really does uh, involve a special energy. Uh, scientists in labs don't like metal bending because they call it macro PK, meaning big PK. And because of the possibility of sleight of hand or cheating. So they deal with micro PK, uh, things like random number generators, which are picking by atomic uncertainty, one or zero, a thousand times a second. And you influence it to pick many more zeros than ones, for example. Mm. And um, they may link that to a computer. So say instead of me and you, these pictures of our faces on Zoom here, Mm -hmm. uh, we might have a kitty cat in the pyramid and you can think here, kitty, kitty, kitty. And the computer, instead of picking 50% pixels from the pyramid, 50% from cat, they bring, brings out the cat clearer and clearer. So you're affecting the computer and the random number generator in there, uh, to pick more mm -hmm. zeros if that's kitty cat. And, uh, when I did that in a lab at Princeton University, I got 30,000 to one by chance. And the nice thing is uh, slot machines include those random number generator devices. So you can think here jackpot and also get it. Uh, but the lab, that's easier to study. And um, so Princeton did one big study that 12 and a half million trials and it came out, you know, highly statistically significant. Um, and that's what we kind of look at. 
Mm -hmm. to, to the scientists who um, are open-minded, this has all been proven already. Yeah. <clears throat> and so now we're looking at what is going on. So like the last time I was at University of Virginia in a the laboratory, they had 128 lead EG on my head, all those pins to do yeah. brainwave patterns. Yeah. Yes. And then yeah. said, do PK 48 seconds on, 48 seconds off, 48 seconds on through 100 trials. Okay. And we got significant PK results and also saw some very interesting brainwave patterns. So we're, uh, we're looking at kind of how it works more now than does it work. Um, right. And so you talked about having mm -hmm. the on, the PK on versus PK off. And so this is something that you can train yourself or learn or you just know how yes. to, to turn on yes. and off. So in that experiment, there's a target, a, box, a gray box that has sensors in it, crystals, other sensors. The box is shielded from electromagnetic uh, energy and all other kinds of things, noise, vibration. And you're supposed to basically tickle those sensors uh, so that they uh, begin to excite and register on a computer. Uh, tickle it with your mind, if you will, for 48 seconds, then you take 48 seconds to rest. The problem with those kind of experiments in a lab is they get boring. By the time you have the EEG on your head, and the 128 leads, sure. you're ready to go home and then you start this <clears throat> procedure and you don't get much feedback. Uh, the nice thing about a slot machine, for example, or rolling dice is you get feedback quickly. Right. Uh, and on dice, for example, um, there's 36 combinations you can make on two dice from the number two all the way up to 12. And one in every six rolls will be a double, like five, five equals six, uh, 10 <clears throat> by statistics. And we've had uh, the last group I did in Vegas, a lady rolled 48 numbers in a row without ever rolling a seven because she didn't want a seven. We were going for doubles. And when you look at the statistics of that, they're very high in terms of uh, this is not just chance going on. Yes. Or luck, as we started the program, I got a book, The Liquid Luck, uh, The Good Fortune Handbook, by an accompanying CD. And um, some people think, oh, that's just luck means, you know, you had nothing to do with it. Uh, we use the word luck to mean you're creating your own positive creation, your own good fortune. And um, for example, in that book, we use the same energies as for metal bending and things. We add in meditation to like a imaginary container of golden liquid, we add energies like happiness, gratitude, feelings of abundance, feelings of compassion that get you out of ego, feelings of praise for everything in the world and feelings of good fortune and feelings of love. And then whenever you wanna be lucky, you imagine yourself taking a drink of that potion and uh, you, you're, it's designed you'll then have a great lucky day. So we've had people when that came out, uh, win $1,000 on scratch tickets three or four weeks in a row, sell houses in a day that had been on the market for six months, get new jobs, find soulmates, um, many kinds of things like that, as well as in healing. <clears throat> and uh, I did liquid luck to sort of summarize 20 years of this experience with PK, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, how to give somebody a taste of that in about a 35 minute meditation. It was so successful that then I read the book, wrote the book with people's stories about how they used it and why things like happiness are important to uh, create a positive reality. Right, I mean, attitude is very important from what I understand. Yes. In this. A combination of attitude and belief. <clears throat> when you look at belief, if you're trying to, say, heal a sore tooth over a weekend, mm -hmm. and you're thinking in your culture, nothing good comes easy, no pain, no gain, those kind of words get in the way. Many people uh, that watch shows like this feel like they're seekers of spiritual wisdom. Right. Wouldn't you rather be a finder? It's a different energy, okay? Uh, our culture is built on survival of the fittest from Darwin's time, 
which was very much in line with what the royalty liked and what the elite economically and politically like, like now. But the latest data in the last 50 years in biology says the prime directive of nature is for the good of all. You'd build a very different society based on for the good of all and you would on survival of the fittest. So those are examples of beliefs that could get in the way as well as, oh, you know, money's the root of all evil and it might give you trouble getting the money energy to come to you. I don't deserve this. This is of the devil. Sometimes I'll hear that. Um, even though in the Bible, you know, Jesus said, you can do what I do and more. And he, you know, said the kingdom of heaven is within and talked about love a lot. And that's what we're doing is we're using uh, very high loving energies. Um, and we have meditation technologies now that people who have never even meditated, like on Liquid Luck CD, that um, what happens is within 10 minutes, because of the brainwave patterning in the meditation, people who have even never meditated, they're under a lot of stress, highly distracted, they can move into deep relaxation within 10 minutes and then move into higher states of consciousness within the next time to do their visualization, or let go of limits or improve their emotional state. And those things come in very handy in the kind of work that I do. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I'm thinking about this belief and the attitude and everything. Um, do you feel there are some people who are more hardwired to be in that energy and more hardwired to be negative? And then how do I think, uh, you know, we're born differently. There might even be karma from other lives. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lady, Helen Hartzell. She would win every <laughs> contest she ever joined. Uh, yes. She would say, select, expect, project. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you would receive your good. So she was naturally very ebullient and generous and happy. Other people are born with uh, genetics or with parenting early in life that might uh, teach them that the world is very unsafe, people are not to be trusted, you, uh, you know, and we, I do deal with a lot of people who had more power as a child. In fact, this metal bending stuff happens for kids a lot easier than adults usually, but then their parents got freaked out because the kid was intuitive and saying, gee, there's something wrong between mommy and daddy. Mommy and daddy would say, no, there isn't. Um, if they uh, said Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Sarah's going to die and Aunt Sarah dies, parents would get freaked out. So a lot of us have had a cap to put on this ability. Right. But by and large, you know, I said it's natural, but let's take sleep as an example. Pretty natural. You get tired, you decide I'm going to go to sleep, and then you think of something else. You set your intent and you let go and you go to sleep. But if I said, okay, Let's put you on TV in front of 20 million people and I'll give you a million dollars if you fall asleep in the next half hour. Most people couldn't. Yeah. What's, what's changed? You're now tense. You're now efforting. You're now not letting it flow. You're not letting go of the intention. And similar things happen in PK that, um, you know, if you took the, the uh, spoon, when I do workshops, People will whisper to me ahead, I'm afraid I'll be the only one not able to do this. But if you ask deeper questions, they say, I'm really also afraid that I will be able to do it. Because <laughs> to do it changes your whole belief system in your life about power, your own agency within your own creativity. Um, and when you both fear to do something and uh, afraid of being success and afraid of failure at the same time, it doesn't go anywhere good. <laughs> uh, and a lot of times with important things, um, we get in that kind of a bind. We right. you know, love to have that new job, but we secretly feel we might not deserve it. And we're afraid if we don't get it, what's going to happen to our income. We have all this mixed emotion going on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so the, uh, the art of this is to really clear up that. So the emotions are very clear and high and positive and your intention is very clear right now and how do you how do you uh train someone or teach someone how to get out of that kind of fear-based mindset and into this 
yeah. love-based mindset. Well, the um, if you're too much in ego or too much in your mind, rather than argue with your own mind, stop it. You know, don't do that. That's just more mental. So we'll bring people into their bodies through dance, walks in nature, those kind of things as a um, a gear shift and then into their hearts. Um, we use these meditations quite strongly. You can watch pictures of kitty cats being born on YouTube or <clears throat> soldiers returning to reunion to their families after war and your heart opens but it stays open just a few minutes till the next hassle phone call comes, you know? <laughs> and uh, we're trying to train a lifelong yoga of more and more heart open, more and more positive, more expansive in your beliefs. And as you begin to live through that, you begin to see all this magic happen. I wanted to um, take my wife to Paris. I love the... Uh, Musée d'Orsay uh, Museum there with the Van Gogh paintings. Mm -hmm. And so I just was in my high energy. And I thought, gee, I'd like to go to Paris with my wife. Boom, an email shows up. Would you like to train a workshop in France? I say, yes. I think, well, I'd like to go over first class round trip for free. That would be nice. By the end of the day, I had two free first class tickets. And I do this or something better for not only me, but for all all of us. And so that resulted in uh, dozens of workshops in Europe, including one where we cleared a lot of, did a lot of healing energy around the Holocaust in Germany. Mm. One in Cyprus, we had 13 countries present. And there were some people that were negotiating the uh, bitter conflict between the Greeks and Turks in, in Cyprus. And they said, gee, these kind of meditative techniques we're using might help us in our negotiation to create a better life for our grandkids. So these things have application. Uh, um, and, you know, it's challenging enough to get your own act together to be clear in your intention. And so in the Vegas groups, we're all focused on the same number. We're in clear intention. But then if you go to order pizza for lunch, 18 people, it can take an hour to figure out what kind of pizza to buy for 18 people, given some are vegetarian, some are vegan, some are meat eaters. And uh, so our challenge as a culture now sometimes is this group intention being coherent for world peace, for justice, those kind of things. Uh, and so that's one of the main areas I'm working in now to really make a better life for our grandkids. Oh, that's really good. Well. It's so funny, just... We were, we're recording this again on January 20th. Just last night, January 19th, I led a meditation online for peace, <clears throat> just to have uh, a peaceful uh -huh. transition today because yes. um, we'd heard all kinds of, of reports that there could be some disruptions today So yes. for the inauguration. So I led a, and it turned out to be a very peaceful day at in Washington, yes. D.C., right? Mm -hmm. And so you do actually take people on field trips to Las Vegas. Yes. So we've yeah. done uh, 99 workshops there. It's the three-day workshop. Uh -huh. it right now is suspended because of COVID. We were ready to do our 100th and have our 100th anniversary one when we had to suspend in March. Um, it's a maximum of 16 people, so there's lots of individual attention, plus myself and my wife usually as a trainer. Uh, and we uh, meditate for a full day together. We learn about PK and how to play the game of dice mainly. And then we go to the table and they're reserved just for us alone. And we raise the energy of that table so high that a lot of times even the crew starts to get tearful saying, this energy is so good. It's just so helping my heart. And we have a ball. Uh, right being in an energy of grounded to the earth, one with all and connected with spirit and feeling great gratitude and abundance. And then what we want, say it's uh, six, six equals 12, uh, usually comes within seconds and we get rewarded with money within seconds. If you go into greed, fear, or ego, the money gets withdrawn because you're not successful. And so it's really like teaching a dog to sit with treats you're classically conditioning people 
into more enlightened way of living over a period of two or three days because you're getting rewarded every time you're in positive energy, punished if you're not. And so it's a great training device. I also do one on uh, Monroe Institute called MC Squared, where we expanded to metal bending, uh, growing the seeds in your hand, lighting light bulbs. They've measured 400 volts of electricity off my hands when we light fluorescence. Uh, and the University of Virginia has been uh, studying us at MC Squared up in Monroe for uh, many years now, and the results are statistically significant. We do healing circles there. We've had things like people with all their nails are yellowed with foot fungus, mm -hmm. uh, have clearer nails the next morning. People with clear CAT scans from cancer. People who've uh, had um, wake up the second day of Vegas workshop pain-free from post-polio syndrome from the first time in 20 years. So we have all this healing as well showing that relationship with manifesting healing and BK. Now, <clears throat> now we do that Monroe program virtually. So if people mm -hmm. would like that are on your uh, webinar mm -hmm. or um, to uh, come in, the last one I did, there were people from Australia, New Zealand, Thailand, Ecuador, Austria, Switzerland, all over the world. And we bent metal on Zoom together. And we grew the seeds on Zoom together and we rolled dice and patterns on Zoom together. And mm -hmm. so it works very well in the virtual format. Mm -hmm. That's about a week long program, about five and a half days. Wow, and through the Monroe the Institute. Institute. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, that's fascinating. Now, MC Squared. Um, are you familiar with Pam Grout's book, MC Squared? No. No, so Pam Grout has also been on the on the um, uh, on the uh, on a podcast, and so uh -huh. so MC Squared. Can you tell just a bit about what that is? <clears throat> so we uh, I wanted something that indicated energy, like we've been talking about. So Einstein's formula E equals MC squared mm -hmm. came to mind, and in this, the MC squared stands for manifestation and creation squared, uh, and again. We have healing circles for everybody in the group, uh, like I just mentioned, as well as healing circles for the earth and for loved ones and friends. We do all the PK stuff I've mentioned. There's lots of uh, hour long, roughly hour long meditations we use headphones to do to raise the energy. We have lots of exercises to get rid of the limiting beliefs and emotional patterns. That's where movies like The Secret fall down, you know, when they say just visualize and it'll be so. Right. Most of us are carrying a shadow. We don't feel deserving. We don't feel powerful. Um, there's uh, things we need to uh, let go of. And um, even to open our hearts are a challenge. So I have a meditation CD called Ocean Heart that I developed after my brother's suicide. Mm -hmm. And I had kind of a brokenhearted feeling and it changed it to feeling like your heart, heart is a vast ocean of love. And if I wanted you, come, Christy, to come in my life, it'd be like a hand coming in water, no resistance, completely enveloped. And when you left, the water goes back to complete, perhaps losing a drop. With that image, people can handle the stress of politics and COVID and all that and still have a wide open, powerful heart flow. Um, the latest one I did is called the forgiving heart because to get these high energies going at one place, we usually have to forgive ourselves and other people, um, and events for certain things in our life that where we felt betrayed. Um, so these technologies we use, these meditations really help you get solidly in a much more positive place and live from that. And now, I just wanted to send a shout out to some of our supporters, Julian, John, James, Marissa, Charlotte, Pauline, Becky, and Louise. Thank you all so much for keeping this podcast going. If you'd like to support this podcast too, please hit the like, follow, or subscribe button, or give us five stars or a positive review wherever you're listening and share this with your friends. You can also subscribe to Radiate You, our 
private Facebook group for bonus content, including classes and meditations. Another way to support our podcast is to go to radiatewellnesscommunity.com slash podcast and click on the Donate Now button. However you support us, we greatly appreciate it, and thanks for listening. Oh, that's beautiful. And I want to apologize to Pam Grout. Her book is actually E Squared. I just recalled that, not MC Squared, but E Squared. Oh. Um, and then you touched on uh, the title of another book that you wrote, Heaven is for Healing, mm-hmm. A Soul's Journey After Suicide. And I'm sorry for the loss of your brother. Mm-hmm. Um, so can you tell us a bit about that book, Heaven is for Healing? Yeah, well, it really spurred all this manifestation work because my brother, I loved him deeply. He's my best friend. He was intelligent, good-looking, hardworking, honest, but he could never keep a job for one thing. Mm. And then he had some physical injuries, and after 40 years of depression, he finally ended his life. And it left me feeling, how can a good person not have a good life? And I realized that for him, he could never feel deserving of goodness coming to him, and he had a lot of fear. Um, And so a lot of my work is around those things to help people uh, do better. That said, I wanted to write a book that talks about suicide uh, in terms of what happens on the other side to you. Uh, And because what you're met with is tremendous love. Every drop of your experience, no matter how you die, is treasured. You're met with kind of almost like a medical triage for exactly what you need to rest and recover. And um, and uh, yet suicide is not a desired act. Uh, I didn't want to write a book that would incentivize suicide yeah. because after you've rested and you've gotten strong enough, you do need to have to fa- face your patterns of thinking and, and uh, emotion that led to that event. Um, but this idea that you'd burn in hell for all eternity, it's just not true. And I wanted to put that out because when my brother suicided, my mom was Catholic and she felt her dearest child who is now going to burn in hell for all eternity. And that is put on top of the grief we already have. Culturally, in, in uh, Roman times, they would kill your family. They would take all your property. It's still a felony in about 30 states in the U.S., and um, in this country, in New Orleans, in the 1700s, they would chop the suicide's body up and throw it to the alligators in unconsecrated ground so the demons could torture it through eternity. That's our cultural background about suicide, and it's not a good thing. So I wanted to gentle that, and the book I read, Heavens for Healing, has tracked my brother on the other side for the last 20 years and showed his progress through his healing, how he was treated, how other people with sudden death are are dealt with, and now his decisions to reincarnate or not, and uh, the process of picking what he would do next. And there's actually the opportunity to have a simulated life, like a very vivid, lucid dream, Mm -hmm. rather than take on the body again. Because when you take on the body, uh, your challenges are encoded into the DNA. It's a little heavier trip. So he decided to go through a few uh, simulation lives before picking up another one in physical body to, to learn about love and learn the chemistry and the physics of how human life works um, a little better before returning here to the physical. So it's, yeah, very, it's a very interesting book, I think people find that even if nobody around them is suicided, they find it a very interesting talk about the afterlife. That's a very interesting book. Now, did you contact your brother, Peter, on the other side, or did you go? Yes, through, uh, through Monroe Institute, they have a program called Lifeline. Yeah. I was in the uh, first one that was ever done 20 plus years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, he died a week after that first program. So the Lifeline trainers and myself and participants honed in on him and we got great verification from all around the world that people uh, were perceiving similar things. The first thing he sent was a big gavel. He had a sense of humor and a uh, line through it, like a no trespassing sign line okay. saying there's no judgment. And he was happy. Um, 
And then I got in touch with, I think, the best channeler I've ever met in the world, Pam Hogan, and had many sessions with her about Pete then. And then when I wrote the book now, 20 years later, I had some new sessions with her as well as touching with Faith, Pete, myself. Uh, so that's where the information about the other side was coming from. Well, that's amazing. That is amazing. That sounds like a very healing book for anyone yeah. who's yeah. had lost a family member in this way, um, that, which reminds me of a question that I had for you about physical healing. So it sounds like the, the principles of this PK, the psychokinesis, can be applied to the human body as well as, as to a spoon. Yes, the, uh, it's a little bit of variation in energy. Mm -hmm. People usually have more desire to help a hu another human or a pet more than to relate to an inanimate spoon, you know? Right. Um, and yet um, uh, the same energies apply opening the heart. Uh, with healing, though, we have to acknowledge that illness is mysterious and sacred. And the example I give is my mom ended up with Alzheimer's. That's the worst thing she wanted. She could do the New York Times crossword puzzle in ink. And she frankly said, Joe, put a pillow over my face if I ever, you know, lose my memory. And she went into a rest home for two years and then she died. And uh, I was having a, um, I had seen an owl on the street side on the way home and then saw another one. And I thought, oh, I must be getting doubly wise. But two days later, I got, I was in a dream where I felt like I was in a mental hospital, everything beautiful and crystal silverware and all glass. And I asked a cute attendant, where can you smoke in here? She said, anywhere you want, the air stays clean all the time. And I started upstairs and I could see the earth in the distance looking out the window. And I realized I was in what Monroe would call Monroe Institute Focus 27, the other side. And then the phone rang, which it just did in the physical here. <laughs> the physical. And, um, and um, they said, your mom just died. So I got up and went into meditation and met with her. And I said, mom, what's up with the Alzheimer's? And she said, well, you know, I couldn't figure a way to get rid of all my religious guilt. So I decided I'd forget everything. Your dad and I had been married 64 years and he had more important things to do on the planet still. And it would have been too much of a shock if I left suddenly. So I gave him time to make his own friends, learn how to cook and clean and do the house budget and all those things. And so it was a gentle transition so he could stay with, and he did then, he stayed till he was uh, 90 plus. Um, and so you went on 20 minutes on how Alzheimer's was a wonderful thing for her. So that's an example of how, from our ego point of view, we might be going, ooh, I need to heal that Alzheimer's. It may not need to be healed. Um, so that said, a lot of things can be healed, body, mind, and spirit. But the first swing we do is say, is this appropriate? And is there a message in here for me or another? that if I uh, le learn the message, I would be wiser and more successful as I go forward. Um, but within that, um, you know, we know things that injury is mainly held in the emotional body if it's a chronic injury. Uh, right. I almost had my foot torn off in a motorcycle accident uh, 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And... Um, there's no cells in my ankle from that time. You know, cells get replaced daily. Yeah. And um, there's a book called on uh, Hawaiian shamanism called uh, Urban Shaman by Sergi King. And he talks about going through the motion as if it did not happen. So I imagined the accident not happening, but me successfully avoiding the car that was coming to strike me. And I could feel changes even 20 years later in my body and mind and spirit as I rewrote the history of that illness. I've used that for when there was a burn on my hand and from picking up something hot, immediately going through the motions as if I had done that more elegantly and not burned my hand. 
and look down and within two minutes, the burn's gone, even though it was blistered. Um, so we have great healing ability, uh, but we need to work not only with our belief, but with our emotional body and then sending this PK energy. Uh, but we've had very, you know, very interesting instant things like a cyst on somebody's hand going away instantly uh, with this kind of energy. Mm -hmm. Now, is this PK energy different than, say, Reiki energy or just the, the natural energy that we have flowing through our body? <clears throat> I think from my point of view, the all the systems I've looked at in healing have some things in common. There's an intent to be of benefit. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a letting go part and then a transmission of energy. So in matrix energetics, they have a two-point technique. You focus one place and then another, okay? Uh, with um, Reiki, they teach you that idea of letting go. Um, with Qigong healing, same kinds of things. And my feeling is we wink out of normal linear time space when we do PK. Um, mm. And when we do healing and into a place of infinite potentiality and bring in a different reality, um, we see that in the PK things quite strongly. Uh, we can actually see a time suspension in some of the things that happen in the laboratory. Um, and I think that's in there for healing. And I think, you know, Reiki, what it can do for you if you're a Reiki master is give you confidence give you an idea of a ritual, uh, a routine. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary to have quiet. You can heal in a subway. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but rituals can help because they create consent between you and I, me and the person being healed. Um, and so Reiki is a very nice system, and there's plenty of other ones that are very powerful as well, from my point of view. No, oh, absolutely. I'm a Reiki. And they do have things in common with the PK. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, energy is energy. Yes. And it, energy is energy. So when working with healing, and you gave the example of a toothache, um, are you manipulating things? Are you bending things or removing things? Like as you. Well, the person I'm thinking of thought first, gee, I can't afford a root canal. That's what the dentist had told her the day before. Right. You know, come in on Monday, go to the end of dust. And so she prayed. She talked with TLC uh, to her jaw, lovingly touched it, um, thought of how good it would be for the tooth to feel wonderful, um, et cetera. And when she went on Monday, the end of said, what are you here for? I'm going to pull the phone out of the wall here. <laughs> can use PK to do that. <laughs> yes, my uh, business line is ringing today with the That's show a good thing. Um, That's a good thing. No, so, I, and I also practice uh, quantum healing hypnosis technique, which is Dolores uh -huh. Cannon's work, right? And mm -hmm. uh, we see that the just summoning the energy, having the intention, um, getting the permission from the higher self, all of this is so instrumental in mm -hmm. all healing. All healing, really. Yeah. yeah, so it can be very, uh, very good to do. And the the PK gives you a way to maybe transcend the natural fears of I'm going to have to go and I don't like the dentist and it's going to hurt and it's going to cost my pocketbook. It gives you a way to move into your heart um, and it gives you a good ways to focus intention to physically see that area changing. I had one guy who um, had been in the army and he had had all these fillings done in his molars. And now 20 years, 30 years later, they're all cracking. And the dentist said, you know, you need $20,000 of work. All these old silver feeling, fillings are bad. He applied this energy work and went back to the dentist a year later. And he said, "What? everything is fine. You don't need any work. He even fixed the metal fillings in his mouth. So everything looked good. So our abilities are very much more than we usually think. Mm -hmm. you know, but our thoughts get in the way. I'm going to mention one thing. A guy wanted a new job, right? And, and he wasn't having any luck. And I said, well, what, what would you really like as a job? And he said, I think I'd like a job two months a year. 
outside in beautiful weather surrounded by pretty women. And I said, well, put that in the meditation. He got a call from somebody he knew barely from high school, took him out to lunch twice, sold him his business, which was an advertising boat you know, on the eastern shore of the United States at the ocean. Pretty girl drives a boat in a bikini. Uh, there's an advertising for Coca-Cola on one side of the boat, local restaurant on the other. By the end of the year, he had three boats and a Lexus. The season was two months a year long. But for most people, as soon as you say job two months a year, they laugh. Right. That's that belief system coming in that that's not possible. And therefore, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So my one of my encouragements to the audience today would be for yourself personally and us as a culture to really let go of those limits. We can transform ourselves individually, transform this culture, the environmental issues, all kinds of issues of justice very rapidly if we let go of all those limits and begin to put our energy in coherent fashion and a loving fashion toward positive outcome. Uh, so that's my commercial today, Chris. <laughs> I love it, Dr. Joe. Yeah, I, I do believe that we can do these. And you talked about affecting peace, affecting world culture, affecting the the planet itself and uh, healing the the forest, the oceans and, and all of that. There's really nothing we can't do. Now, uh, we've had so one guy who came through the Monroe uh, program in Vegas program with me. His family had very huge thousands of acre farms out in the Midwest of the country, he was able to raise the nitrogen content in the soil through PK. Imagine the world with no need for nitrogen fertilizer and all the pollution it creates. Oh. Uh, we've had groups of 300 play, pray over a lake that was polluted and clear the lake of pollution. Uh, there's many things we could do as a culture <clears throat> to some of the program things. It's very practical. Mm -hmm. Well, you look at Dr. Emoto's work with transforming the water crystals, yeah. prayer mm -hmm. and meditation with music and just with intentions. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is absolutely possible. And then what you said about the, the farming made me think of the, you said that you, in, in this program, people were growing seeds in the palm of their hand too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Um, without yes, we water, would grow... In the palm of our hand, we'd hold it in meditation where we become one with the earth, one with spirit, send those kind of energies, and we get Ruth growth of an inch and a half in two minutes. Then we'd let those seeds stay in a bowl for a couple of days, uh, say in the MC squared program that I mentioned, uh, or in the home study course I have called Sync Creation, and we compare those to controls. And we'd often use winter wheat berry because cats like it to eat it, you know, in the house. And uh, they, the ones we send energy to might be three times higher. And if a person sent Reiki versus Qigong energy versus PK energy, they'd look a little different. We do have a sale going on now. It's called the COVID special with our Sync Creation Home Study with all this stuff. It comes with three individual coaching hours with me. And all of this stuff with spend bending metal and rolling dice and all of that, and the exercises to really get deep into these beliefs and and energies. Um, <clears throat> so I, with with COVID time, I felt it was important to put something out that could really help folks. Um, and we're getting good reports that it has kept them in good positive energy, which is great for the immune system during this time we've had that's been pretty stressful in the United States. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. And so the Sync Creation, we can get that on your website, syncreation.com? Yes. So that's hard to hear what it sounds like. It's S-Y-N-C, like the word synchronize, S-Y-N-C, then the word creation, C-R-E-A-T-I-O-N.com. Mm -hmm. And if it's easier, they can people can go to Liquid Luck Book, dot com and and you come to my main website as well and uh, the books and cds would be there there's a lot of free tips on energy healing pk manifesting on the website as well and exercises in writing a person could do to raise their energy so it's a good website to go to even if you don't want to spend any money 
uh, because there's good information there for you to be and of help. Fan, uh, fantastic. And we'll, we have all of the um, the links that you're talking about, all your links in the show notes. So uh, people can just click on it and go to get those. And so again, your books are um, Liquid Luck and Heaven is for Healing. And then you also have the Vegas one. And I'm trying to pull that up now. What is the name titled of Inner that? Inner Vegas, Creating Miracles, okay. Abundance, and Health. Kind of like Inner Tennis <laughs> and Inner Golf. We decided to do one we called Inner Vegas. Mm -hmm. And it talks about um, all the experiments in the science labs that I've done mm -hmm. um, up to that point, the work at Monroe Institute then going to Vegas individually for about five years. And I would go into these deep meditative states with this energy and could actually see through physical matter, hear angelic choirs, and then do really well on dice, for example, and then beginning to teach it to other people and finding how, how to get rid of the fears that were in the way. Um, so my favorite saying, I have it on my wall here, is fear is expensive, love is priceless, choose wisely. And so Inner Vegas talks a lot about how to melt fear uh, through an open heart versus just meet fear with courage. And um, that gets people on their way. That's amazing, amazing. So all of this is very easy to learn. We have a natural ability to do this and you have the tools available. So- yeah. Really, yeah. we can all do this. Is there anything else you think that is important for listeners to know to um, connect with this or anything we haven't, haven't covered? One thing I would mention, I have a, a CD or a download called Abundant Heart. Mm -hmm. In there, you're using deep meditative techniques to open your heart. And then when your heart is open, asking your heart what it would really like to manifest. And its list is much different than your ego's list usually. So the ego may want a new Mercedes Benz, but the heart may want you to move into what you came to the planet for this time and to fully express yourself. So people get a different idea. And this starts with concept and belief, as we've mentioned, of what would make their heart sing in this area of manifestation. Um, and I'd encourage people now to um, to be inspired, to give uh, the new administration a break, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what side of the aisle you've been on, and to uh, and to give our support to bring come together again, um, and because the power we have as a group, uh, where two or more are gathered together, is infinite, um, and I'd love to see that happen. I got four grandkids now; I love them to death. Uh, they go from just a few weeks old to five, six-year-old is going to stay with us this evening. And I want them to have a good plan to live on. We should leave in, in good shape for them. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think if we do come together, then we can do that. Yeah. As long as we stay divided, it's just going to stall. Stall yeah. anything that we want to do. It, it, you know, we should be getting tired of people playing one against another just so they can keep their power. Um, there's a lot of feeling of lack in the society that, yeah. uh, you know, religion sells us. You don't have a way to contact God directly. You lack that ability. So come to my church and tithe me. Politics say without us, there would be uh, just riots in the streets. Yet mm -hmm. uh, governments have probably caused more harm than people themselves have. Uh, education, people say, without education, you won't amount to anything. People are selling lack constantly in order to sell us something. And uh, we need to realize that it's an abundant world, and we have an abundant of abundance of power and of wisdom. And um, we can tap into our intuitive gifts and our gifts of the heart. And um, things will go much better than if we give away our power through letting people divide us or convince us that we lack something. No, absolutely. There's plenty plenty to go around. Yeah. Absolutely. And we can all work on healing that. Well, Dr. Joe Gallenberger, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been this has been really good. 
Really good. My pleasure, Christy. I hope it helps some folks. And uh, I guess it's a good day to buy a lottery ticket. Right. Because we're um, talking about luck in this program. And so if you're <laughs> feeling more lucky now, uh, that might be something to do. <laughs> That's right. Mega Millions is up to a billion dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just about. Just about. Okay. I've known well, many people who've uh, won the lottery. And, you know, there's all these stories that it ruins people. Many people have done just perfectly fine with having a little more resources. And the people's numbers from the heart win more than computer pick numbers do. So birthdays of uh, loved ones, those kind of things. The one I liked the best was a lady and man fell in love in Ohio, and she was from Japan. She had to go home, and he said, give me your address at home. I'm going to win the lottery this weekend and come get you. And he won $21 million in the Ohio in the lottery. He went to Japan, knocked on her door, and got her, and they got married. They took it at $700,000 a year for 20 years, and they're still enjoying it. But it was a, uh, it was a Valentine's gift, if you will. Uh, coming from the heart, I got to win this lottery. So. Did he use her her address numbers in? Uh, and I don't know what numbers he used actually, but he uh, he he got it that same week. He said he was going to do it. That's amazing. Well, you know what? This does remind me of a story you told on Coast to Coast AM. Is that um, after nine eleven? Mm -hmm. Remember this story? Can you tell yes. tell about that? Yeah, so PK is not real good for lottery usually because there's a million people thinking millions of different numbers and right. one person needs a kidney and one wants to start an animal shelter, all these good reasons yeah, to win. Mm -hmm. But after 9-11, when people were thinking 9-1-1, the New York pick three won more, more than by chance. And if a million of us thought the same number, it probably would come in. But so lotteries are often better handled by intuition, which also goes up with this energy we talk about, this PK energy. People usually get much more intuitive hits. Um, so worth a shot, you know. It couldn't fun. hurt. Yeah, that's right. If it's on your life path. You know, the, the other way you could make a million dollars is come up with something that will really be good for the planet. Mm -hmm and for other people, and that's your passion. And nowadays, uh, people make a million dollars on a weekend online as a teenager when they think of a really good idea. One guy I know, uh, he was a son of somebody I know, uh, shy adolescent. He just began to talk about the trials of adolescence, why he put together an old car online, like, you know, a classic car. And within... Um, a little while, he was making 100000 a month with kids hitting his site. And he was saving kids from suicide and helping with people's relationship, just talking simply about how he's getting through the troubles of adolescence. So if you think of something that the universe would love to have out there, because it'll help more than just yourself, that's a great way toward a million dollars, too. <laughs> I love it. We all have that within us. Yeah. This is wonderful. Well, Dr. Joe, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been really enlightening. And, and My pleasure. I'm glad to be with you today. I wish you a wonderful rest of the week. Wonderful to you, too. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.